Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining. This is TAM Lab number 48, uh, moving vSphere authentication from LDAP to LDAP S. Uh, my name is Bill and I'm a TAM uh, here at VMware. So let's get rolling. Um, we're just gonna run through a couple things here. Uh, configure vSphere authentication with LDAP and then move it to LDAP S. Uh, but then we're also going to configure this new Microsoft patch um, that, that got recently announced uh, for March 2020. Uh, and then we're going to check the functionality of the environment. And this is what my lab looks like. It's, it's nothing major. Um, I have uh, a laptop that can support VMware Workstation. I have a handful of VMs running. I have um, a, a domain controller running uh, Active Directory, Domain Services, DNS, and then Cert Services as an enterprise CA. I also have another VM running uh, ESX, and nested inside that is a vCenter. So this is all we need to really run through what this process looks like. Um, and I'd add that you know, this lab uh, was inspired by this uh, Microsoft patch that was announced uh, to be required in March of 2020. And it's a result of um, a man in the middle attack and how to respond and, and react to it. And so the patch, um, when it was first announced, was going to force LDAP S. And that's a big deal, right? When we look at um, all of the infrastructure out there that leverages LDAP, not just VMware solutions, but larger, right? This could end up being a very big thing. Um, so we thought it'd be worthwhile just to run through from a VMware perspective, what does it look like for vSphere to move from LDAP to LDAP S? So with that, Let's minimize the slides. Let's go straight to the lab. Um, so let me hop over here uh, to what we have going on in vSphere. So this is just um, that vCenter I spun up. Um, and you can see here I've logged in as an admin um, and I'm under uh, the configuration identity sources here under single sign-on. So this is where you would go ahead and add a new identity source, right? Now you can see here Active Directory domain. You can actually join a vCenter to a domain with the announcement that Microsoft made around LDAP and LDAP S, um, using or joining to the domain um, is not affected by that patch. So if you and your home lab or your customers have joined Active Directory or uh, vCenter to Active Directory, then you're not affected by this. Um, now there are reasons why um, people don't have it joined or customers don't have it joined to Active Directory domain, rather they leverage LDAP. Um, and there's a number of use cases, for example, acquisition, right? Multiple domains needing to authenticate, uh, things of that nature. There's, there's all kinds of reasons why you'd want to do this. So I'm going to real quick. So if yeah. I can, if I can just get you to say that one more time, very succinctly, very directly, AD authentication, classic AD authentication is not affected by this. If you're sure. using your AD server in a, a native LDAP mode, it is affected. Correct. Yes. And we have, and I'll show you at the end, we have um, a link or a, a blog post from Bob Plankers um, that describes that very well. Um, so keep that in mind. So we'll share that. Um, and it's super easy to find on, on uh, the internet. Cool. All Thank right, so, you. Yeah, no problem. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and start just by clicking add identity source. And you can see here, right? that we have a couple of options, right? Once we uh, join Active Directory, we can use this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select AD over LDAP because that's what we're talking about, right? So let me just fill in some blanks here. Uh, DC01, great. Uh, this is the boring stuff, I apologize, lab.info. All right. Okay, perfect. So you can see here when we go to add an identity source, nothing is asking us for LDAP versus LDAP S, right? And this is a, um, it's kind of nice, right? Um, we're gonna go ahead and select this option here for any domain controller in the domain. And I'll tell you why later on when we do LDAP S, why this isn't an option. Um, and then an SSL cert. And again, since we're just doing LDAP, we're totally fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add. It's not very exciting, I'll admit, but it's there. Um, and so by doing that, we pointed to the right domain, we provided credentials, now we're bound, we can go ahead uh, and query LDAP as we need to. Um, but what we're trying to do here 
is actually uh, configure LDAP S. So I'm going to go ahead and take this existing config and edit it. Uh, and you can see there's a couple things we can't do. We cannot change the source type, right? So we'd have to delete it if we want to change it to something else. We can't change the domain, right? Again, delete it, recreate it. Um, what, what we need to do is a couple things here. One is now we need to specify domain controllers. Right, so LDAP S, right, being secure LDAP, similar to HTTP versus HTTPS, requires a certificate, right? And so um, each domain controller could potentially have its own certificate for LDAP. And so we need to specify which domain controllers we're going to talk to, and then we'll have to figure out how to get those certs, right? So, so we'll do our LDAP S, and it's. Uh, S.dco1-dco1.lab local. I only have a single domain controller. And, oh, and our password here. There we go. And you can see it failed, right? Because we don't have the cert, right? And so this process, what it wants you to do is provide the cert so that it understands both sides. Um, so I see we have three chat messages here. Oh, thanks, Steve, for putting that in. Perfect. Um, so I can't actually config finish this configuration without getting the cert. So let me show you how you can do that. Um, there's a couple ways that you can go about this. One is maybe the more layer, uh, layer eight route is have a good relationship with the people that manage certificates and Active Directory. Um, you could go ask them for where the cert is, and they should be able to give it to you. Um, we don't always have that, right? So let's talk about another way to do it, which would be open SSL, right? So um, with our vCenter uh, appliances, the VCSA, open SSL um, is available for us to use. And so you can see here I had it already primed, but it auto logged out. So let me just go ahead and get back to a shell. And so we're gonna leverage open SSL to connect to the LDAP server on port 636. Now, um, my domain is running its server, or it's a domain uh, level, functional level 2012 R2. And so when you create a, uh, an enterprise CA, it actually goes ahead and auto configures um, LDAPS. So it should be available, right? And the, the certificate is automatically plumbed. And as you add domain controllers, it goes ahead and distributes certificates and things of that nature. Um, if you're doing a standalone um, LDAP, like a, well, I mean, yeah, standalone LDAP, you can do a standalone uh, Active Directory LDAP if you want, or things of that nature. Then you have to do it a little more manually. But in this instance, um, you know, I'm not doing any additional config to make LDAP available or LDAP S available. It's just running on port 636. So I'll go ahead and run that. And so OpenSSL is gonna reach out and it's gonna ask for all these certs, all this information. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up, right? And we can kind of see what it's doing, right? It reached out um, and it grabbed this cert. And this is what we care about. And just like with any cert, we want the beginning and the end. And we don't necessarily need the whole chain for this, which is really, really nice, right? Um, did you on the white window uh, use the wrong uh, URL at the end? Dot local shouldn't be. Dot oh, info? Dot info. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, info. We'll okay. get the same. We'll get the same error. But I thank you for catching that. <clears throat> um, so with that, we're gonna have that. We're gonna capture that and save it in a cert. I already have it saved. So we're just gonna go to Tim. Where's my TAN lab desktop? There it is. Bam. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and hit save. All right. So the key here to call out is two things. One, thank you for catching that I had the wrong, uh, wrong domain there. Uh, but second, now that uh, it accepted it, right? So the server URL now is showing LDAP S. Right. If the URL again was wrong, that would not work. If the certificate was wrong, it would not work. Right. So you can take your existing LDAP um, identity source here. You can edit it. You know, point to specific, you know, domain controllers that are providing the LDAP services. 
provide the cert, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead now, and I'm going to wreck this. Um, and we're going to kind of see what it looks like once the patch is actually applied. Right, so let's hop over to my domain controller. Um, I've already installed the patch. That's not too fun to watch. Um, and I think we've all probably done it plenty of times. So just the patch is installed. Um, and we have a couple places that we want to go ahead and set this, this policy, right? So within my domain, I have the two just default policies, a domain controller, default domain controller policy and a default domain, right? And, you know, if we look at the domain controller policy, we got computer policy, Windows security, right? You can follow this down. This is all documented from Microsoft, right? But what we're going to do is hop over to this, the setting called domain controller, LDAP server signing requirements. There you go. I'm going to apply that. And then what you'll find too as well um, is for the clients, right? So there's a, a, a GPO for clients and other, you know, non-domain controllers where it's LDAP signing requirements here. Um, this is really interesting. I'm going to call these things out. There are three settings here. Um, and if you're to set them manually through a registry that, you know, it'd be zero, one, uh, and two respectively, <clears throat> there is an option through this policy now that essentially says you can negotiate, right? If you want to sign, you can, and if you don't want to, that's still acceptable. And that's really valuable because what that means is clients that are still authenticating using LDAP will be logged. Right. And so I'll show you, I'll give you a link at the end on how we can leverage that data. But what it means is now we can start figuring out across our infrastructure, right? What other things are hitting this LDAP server? Because, you know, we got vSphere handled, right? You know, VMware is just knocking out of the park. Um, but there are other infrastructure devices, switches, um, VPNs, right? Um, KVMs. I had one customer that said, we have our, we authenticate KVM access through Active Directory via LDAP. Right? There's all kinds of other things out there that leverage LDAP, and this kind of patch is very disruptive. So knowing that logs can exist, the identify those is going to be really, really important. <clears throat> but for this lab, we want to go ahead and require signing. Yep. All right, so that policy is in place. Um, and we all know that group policy can take a little while to, t you know, to go into effect. So I'm going to go ahead and just restart this domain controller real quick. And that should just take you know, not too long, luckily. Hey, so Bill, those yeah. GP update slash force. Sorry, I was trying to get off mute. <laughs> oh, GP yeah. GP update slash force. I could yeah, have done that. Good. That's a good point. Um, but just a quick question. So those, those GPO changes you just made, Yes. Would those be enforced after applying that patch from Microsoft? Uh, would that, Correct. They would be set by default then, right? Is that? So that's, that's one of the big changes that Microsoft just announced is back on uh, just two days ago on the 4th, <clears throat> they announced that it will no longer be the default. So what they announced originally was you install the patch. This is going to happen. And my guess, this is just conjecture, maybe there's some feedback from customers or whatnot, but now the patch is configured to be installed, just like we saw here, to install, but not by default. The settings are not default now. So you have to go through and manually set those settings to enable it, which is great, right? I mean, we all know that customers can struggle with lifecycle management and managing patches and things like that. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes you just do it and see what happens. And my concern is for those customers that don't know how to test after patches, this would have just blown up. So I'm happy to see that they made yeah. that change. So it's no longer the default, but talk to us three days ago. And that's the guidance that we had from Microsoft. Okay. So back to this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just RDP back to the domain controller. So while you're logging in, Bill, quick question in the chat. Um, sure. Is the steps you just did to reconfigure 6.7 the same for 6.5? Um, my understanding is it, it changes a little bit when you move to the, uh, the Flex client, the web client versus the HTML5 client. Um, 
there are some additional checkboxes that say, you know, use SSL and things of that nature. So the, the look and the feel of the, of the activity would be slightly different. But the moral of the story is the same. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we're back. Um, you know, by doing a nice reboot, I guess I could have done the GP update. Um, the domain or the policy is in place now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now. Um, when you install, I believe it's on domain controllers, um, there's a LDP utility. And what this lets you do is, is connect to an LDAP service. Um, and do stuff with it. Well, what we want to do is just kind of validate some settings, right? So I'm going to real quick connect to localhost on 389, which is the, the, the LDAP port, and it's nothing, right? So if I try and bind to it, should fail, right? You tried to bind, um, failed strong authentication, a more secure authentication method is required for the server. Well, that's pretty cool. That's exactly what we wanted to happen, right? The patch was installed. It's supposed to re require LDAP S. So let me go ahead and um, disconnect. And this time we're going to connect using SSL on port uh, 636. Okay. Now, if I bind to it, Hey, look at that. I've authenticated, right? So we know that this patch is in effect now and you should be able to run this LDAP or LDP.exe um, on other servers. You just have to, you know, go find it. Um, again, it's, it's installed by default on domain controllers. So, um, so this is our first way to test the, did this thing uh, happen, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, head here and shrink out. Is this making sense, right? Um, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, so far so good. I think so what would be good to know is what other potential VMware products will be impacted. I know App Volumes is a big one. Fear, it looks like obviously. Yeah, so far the the guidance that I've seen is App Volumes and vSphere. Um, I bet there, VRO as well. Would you say VRO? Yeah, if you've got a connect to, a connection to Active Directory, there may be something there as well. Oh, perfect. You want to. We could check that out sometime. I don't have VRO. Okay. I'm just making a note here in VRO. Yeah. I'm just curious if anybody else on the phone has, you know, experienced anything else that could impact, be impacted. It'd be great to hear that. Put it in the chat or speak up. Uh, Pamela says VIDM, depending on how you have it configured. Yep. Yeah. Mm, sure. Okay. Well, perfect. So let me go ahead then. Um, so we already, we already checked or validated that it actually kind of worked, you know, as expected once that patch was installed. Um, so what I want to do here is I'm going to swing this over. So while we set this up, I also want to show you a log that exists on, on the VCSA. So it's going to be SSO admin server.log. Um, so we're going to tail that and actually go through setting this thing up now, right? So if we do our add identity source, um, Sam lab, TC equals, uh, TC equals info, right? Come on, info. there we go, lab.info. Cool. All right. So again, I'm I am very aware that I'm setting up LDAP, not LDAP S. And so we see that we get this red box. But what do we, what actually happens here? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill the tail here and scroll up. Um, and so what we're gonna find, and I know this is unfortunate here, on the you know how to do the size. Um, there we go. Failed to probe con uh, connectivity, right? So as we start looking through these error messages, uh, failed to pass connection test for vSphere. Um, there is a message. Strong auth required LDAP exception. There we go. Strong, uh, stronger 
authentication required. Right, so we see the, a similar message that what we saw before, right? So the LDAP server is coming back and saying, no, 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 you got to do better than that, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and do what we did before, right? Where now I'm going to specify um, LDAP S. Quick question gonna... here. If we want to add two domain controllers, um, do you add it under just one identity source separated by a comma or you do you do two two separate identity sources? Two domain two separate two separate domains or two domain controllers? Two domain controllers. Okay, so yeah. So I could come in here if I had another one and just do it here. LDFS. Yeah. So I could I could do LDFS. I see. Oh I see. Oh two. Okay. All right. Yeah. And now, in one file. Okay. Yeah. Now, one thing I want to call it, these little information circles are actually pretty helpful. So, you know, sometimes we just kind of gloss over them. Uh, if you forget what port things are running on, great. This is really interesting for Active Directory multi-domain controller deployments. Yeah. You might actually find you want to try a different port. Um, and that might, that might work a little better for, you know, other, other configurations out there. Um, SSL certs also does the same thing. Right, if you want to use LDAP S, right, you have to type LDAP S in here and then provide a cert. Um, anyway, so these are, you know, feel free to point these out to your customers. Um, so I'll go ahead and just browse for that cert again. And so now if I start the tail, and I go ahead and hit add. Oh, look at that. This is a whole lot smaller this message right um, we didn't really get the errors and now it's commenting it's like well it's not a UPN right like I didn't provide a UPN which is fine right that's going to be your um, your format that's more email analogous right administrator at lab dot dot info um, but anyway let me kill the tail here I mean you can see here that it's it worked um, server SSL cert is a trusted cert Right, so it understands both sides, um, and so we're successful, and we see that here. So now, if I go to my users and groups, and I go to my groups, and I want to add something, there you go. In fact, it, it remembered it. Lab.info. I can come in to add members. I can search lab.info, and maybe I want to do domain admins, domain domain guests. That's a horrible idea, right? Maybe I want to do that just for whatever reason, right? But it's searching my domain. It's coming up with um, with things that work. Maybe I want to come in here. Um, right now, here's my lab.info. Right, there's there's a me account. Right, so it's enumerating the domain. Right, so now I can hop over here to a separate session and log in as a domain user. Oh, don't, don't save that. Right, so it's doing that all over LDAP S. So pretty straightforward, honestly, to get it set up. I think one of the trickiest parts um, is really figuring out where is that cert. That's what was kind of throwing me for a loop. Um, you know, documentation and examples out there um, take it for granted. Like, just go find the cert. Well, it's not always the most straightforward thing to do. So that open SSL command that I ran earlier that pulled the cert that was uh, that was a huge. Uh, when to find that command and to leverage that. Um, so, you know, notes that I have additional notes, right? So this is, this is potentially huge. I think I talked about this before, right? Just the overall breadth um, and depth that LDAP has made inside of our infrastructures, right? So, you know, as we talk to our customers, encourage them to consider this is bigger, right? This is a bigger thing than what, than, than just vSphere. So open those dialogues with the network team, open those dialogues with security, servers, everybody else, because they may be impacted by something like this too. Um, and yeah, so I guess I'll end at least my little section here with a couple resources. So I mentioned earlier, there's a, a blog post from Bob Plankers uh, that was just updated today um, that again, Microsoft changed their guidance 
um, for how this patch is going to be implemented. This is a great article, right? Feel free if you haven't, send this to your customers, right? He walks through a whole bunch of stuff in here, right? In fact, here, here's his LDP, right? Right, so this is a, a brilliant uh, resource that you can leverage. Um, hey, Bill, can you put that link in the chat? I absolutely will do that right now. Um, and then there's also a question from Herbert in the chat. Uh, it says, just to be sure, the Microsoft patch will not affect Windows session authentication, correct? Correct. I mean, that means, you know, logging into a domain computer, like you're thinking probably Horizon or just traditional. Oh, yeah. As far as I understand, as long as something is domain joined, it's not going to affect it. If it's LDAP based, if, you, if that authentication is truly just making an LDAP call, similar to what we saw with that LDAP URL there, um, I would question that. You definitely need to test it. But if it's something that's, you know, machine domain joined, um, and you're authenticating through, you know, Kerberos and things like that, you should, should be fine. Okay. Um, and then Reggie made a comment, uh, said, glad he updated the document to include the two eight, eight, nine event IDs. So yes. I don't know if you were going to cover this bill, but I think how we could potentially leverage these event IDs and something like log insight to proactively, <sighs> you know, look for, Oh, look at that. Steve, your, your $20 is in the mail. So, um, this is from another Tam, Brian Wuchner, um, talking about how to leverage our VMware log insight. Um, to find these LDAP, these insecure LDAP binds, right? So um, read Can you through put that this. one in the chat too. Yep. Boom, like that. So yeah, so read through this, check it out. Um, it's going to be super valuable. Now you know we know that not every customer has Log Insight, um, but the the principles here still apply on how you can still glean that information either manually or through another uh, log analysis tool or whatever else, right? But um, the fact that those fields are, or those logs are available are just massively useful, right? So again, scroll through this. This is highly focused on, um, on log insight, but again, the, the moral of the story here um, is we can start leveraging these logs that Microsoft is making available. Um, and then last, uh, this is, uh, and I'll throw this into chat as well. Um, this is a VMware KB article talking about app vault, right? So if you have customers on the EUC side leveraging app volumes, um, make sure that they're aware of the impact. The guidance that we saw up until this week was, you know, make sure you're working with support um, when you're going to make the change, have them help identify the right way to make that change. We see that a patch is being developed to help um, accommodate those changes a little you know, more gracefully, if you will. Um, so, so there's that. So that's in the chat as well. Uh, and for anybody having to you know, just watch this remotely, you should hopefully have time to write down the URL if you need it. Um, but that's that. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward process. What else? Anybody else have any, any questions? Comments, thoughts, concerns. I can sure say that from my perspective, um, my my customers when I heard about this, their jaws hit the floor. Um, because LDAP is so basic, and for many years we've relied on the ability just to, you know, point at an OU, point at a server and suddenly now you can authenticate. And we all know that lifecycle management is hard. And so the idea of having to go and review infrastructure to understand how things authenticate is not something that people want to just do before March, right? Like there's a lot of stuff going on between now and then. So the fact that Microsoft has now changed the default behavior of it is a minor miracle. And I think that's fantastic. Um, and so we're going to be in a great position from an IT perspective, not just VMware, but from an IT perspective to uh, adapt to it and hopefully work with our business partner or IT partners to actually, you know, when, the, when they finally check the boxes and set the policy settings that we can at least uh, adapt as best as we can. So that's, that's it. It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward lab this week. Um, anything else? Questions? I don't see anything in the chat or Q&A at the moment, but uh, really appreciate you doing this, Bill, because this is going to be a big one for our customers, I think. 
Yeah, well, and you know, the nice thing is it's pretty, for those that use LDAP, it's pretty, pretty straightforward change to make. You just gotta make sure that the domain is you know prepped appropriately and you can get that cert. Right. So once once you get the cert, it's pretty academic, right? Go change a couple settings, put the cert in, you're done. Perfect. All right. I see the chat flashing one more time here. Excellent. Well, thank you, Monica, for joining. So um, I guess with that, we'll go ahead and uh, end it, unless anything, anybody has anything else they want to bring up? No. Nope. Thanks, Bill. Hey, no problem. Thanks, everybody, for your time. Good and, job. Uh, and yeah, have a fantastic rest of your day. Good job, there, Bill. Thanks.